Fallout Equestria the Chrysalis, Chapter 24, Picking Up the Pieces Dusty stared down at the crate that he had just opened. A martyr. His voice was halfway between awe and exasperation. Shit, I don't know if we'd ever find a use for it and I'm still tempted to take it. Starlight glanced over from the crate that she was prying open. What would we even use a mortar for? I mean, at least I can see a use for that little grenade launcher that you snagged, but isn't a mortar a bit excessive? There's no such thing as too much firepower, or too many tools. Dusty replied, Just too much weight. And since we've got Sickle... I looked up from the crate that I was looking through with its variety of explosives. We'd gotten halfway through the line of crates and the amount of munitions just kept piling up. There were mines, grenades, rockets, cannon shells, mortar rounds, and just about every flavor of explosive I could think of. We still can't carry it all, Starlight said. Even with the cart they've got, they must have found some buried munitions bunker or something. Dusty shook his head. We aren't taking everything, just what we can carry or haul in the wagon. We'll demo the rest. Demo? You mean, blow up? Starlight asked. Shit, seems like a waste. Better than some other ponies wandering across it. Yeah, I guess. Starlight muttered. Still seems like a waste. The door banged open and a sickle entered. Okay, Miss Medium Well is buried. Starlight grimaced, keeping her eyes fixed on the crate. Did you bury Oliver? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sickle said, snickering under her helm. I still say it's a waste of meat. You're disgusting. Starlight grumbled. We already went over this. Dusty said, frowning as he pulled the mortar tube out of its crate. We've got plenty of food. No eating ponies. Starlight grunted, digging around inside her crate. Can't believe we even need to say that. Do raiders count as ponies? Sigal asked with a grin. Because I usually don't go for extra crispy, but Whisper fried up one pretty good in that tank. Starlight muttered quietly. I was feeling too much tired to deal with this. <sighs> Sickle, knock it off. Fuck you too. She replied, grinning. And shit, did you really kill those two while they were fucking? <laughs> That's just gold. <sighs> they just finished. I said. Not that it makes any difference. She paused, considering her for a moment, then chuckled. Eh, okay, that's not so bad. Guess they went out on a high note. She looked back towards the kitchen, where the body still lay. Unlike the remains of the ponies that we had hoped to rescue, we weren't bothering with burying the raiders. Shit, you kind of went on a murder fest in here, didn't you? How many of these fuckers did you kill? I gripped my teeth, but paused in my inventory counting to think back, knowing that she likely wouldn't relent without an answer. Six. Possibly seven, but Dusty and I had both shot at the raider on the stairs, and I figured he was more likely to have gotten the killing blow than I was. Sickle thought for a moment, then snorted. Fuck, even with the two guns from earlier, I only got four. Of course, one of those was in power armor, but fuck! She thumped me unpleasantly hard on the shoulder. You need to lay off the killings, Whimper. You're gonna make me look bad. I restrained the urge to bare my nice sharp teeth, though my voice carried enough sharpness to make up for it. Believe me, I would like nothing more than to never have to kill a pony again. Unfortunately for me, that doesn't seem to be very likely. Hey, if you gotta kill a bunch of ponies, you might as well learn to fucking enjoy it. Sickle said with a grin and another pat. I shook it off with a quick shrug on my shoulders. She actually laughed at my display of irritation. Thankfully, she didn't push it any further, and instead turned her attention to Starlight. Hey, Runt, you want me to haul that power armor down from the roof? Should be just your size. Starlight's head came up, the expression of irritation immediately twisting in confusion, as the barb she had expected instead seemed to be a genuine offer to help. Uh, sure, I guess. Might be a bit of a fixer-upper. Sickle said with a chuckle as she turned to head out again. I fucked that shit up good. When we had finished with what was stored in the barracks, we moved on to the other building. Doing so meant passing through the courtyard and therefore passing by Boomer's remains. I avoided looking, but the mere presence was enough to bring it to the forefront of my mind. The whole subject left me feeling conflicted. What Boomer had done was horrific. I wasn't at all upset that she was dead. However, the method troubled me. Not only because it was equally horrific, but because I could appreciate the almost karmic justice of it. Sickle's method of execution seemed like something I should object to, did object to, but could still sympathize with. I felt dirty. We scoured the other building, 
It lacked the stockpile of the barracks, but we searched all the same. Mostly we turned up personal belongings, a few scattered caps, some low-quality weapons, and a modest assortment of drugs. The most interesting was another broadcaster, wired up in similar fashion to the one that we had found on the Raider Sniper. The three healing potions were a bitter prize, but the capstone was what we found in Boomer's quarters. There were quite a few items of interest. Tools, scraps of metal, various machinery parts, and a large floor crane, not to mention yet more explosives. All of that seemed insignificant compared to the case that we found under Boomer's cot. We sat around the open case, staring down at its contents. I'm sure my expression was one of wide-eyed shock and fear. Dusty stared with narrow eyes as if appraising a dangerous situation. Starlight's eyes were as wide as mine, but where I looked on in apprehension she was struggling to restrain a grin. And Sickle merely sat there, head tilted slightly to the side until she broke the silence with a single word. Dibs! Fuck no, Dusty said with a start. You're psychotic enough already, no way in Tartarus am I arming you with a case of balefire eggs. What? Sickle said, gesturing at the case, and the egg-shaped objects within. They cast off a deep green glow, while necromantic energy swirled within them. Hey, it's half a case at most. Technically, that was true. While the hard foam within the case had eight slots, only three were occupied. Starlight snickered, not even hiding her grin as she looked down on the balefire eggs. I like how you didn't argue with the psychotic part. Well, yeah. Sickle said with a grin I could only describe as proud. We're demoing these with the rest of the excess, Dusty said. These things are more dangerous than they're worth. It'd be like using a mega spell to dig a ditch. And there's no way I'm letting these get loose for some other pony to use. Shit, we're lucky Boomer didn't decide to hit a settlement just for laughs. Starlight looked away from the dancing lights just long enough to glance up at Dusty. Weren't you just saying something about how there was no such thing as too much firepower? I can at least think of a tactical use for a mortar, Dusty said, gesturing wildly at the case. How could we possibly make use of a balefire egg? By blowing up everything ever? Sickle helpfully noted. Yeah, Starlight said, grinning. Heck, if we had these, we wouldn't even have to come in here. We could have had Whisper fly over and drop one right in the middle of the place. Boom, no more raiders. Sickle laughed. Just kick back on the hillside and watch the fireworks. Her grin rapidly faded. Wait, then I wouldn't get to do any killing- uh, Fuck that, that's a shitty plan. Starlight rolled her eyes, still grinning. Come on, I'm sure you'd get a kick out of watching something like that. Well, sure. Sickle said, then raised a blood-spattered hoof. Still ain't as fun as doing it by hoof. Starlight grimaced a bit at all the blood and turned to me. You're like our demolitions expert, right? Think you can make a use of them? I frowned, staring down at the trio of balefire eggs. I really wanted to argue the expert part, seeing as I had fairly limited training and experience. But I suspect that would have all been moot after the events in Merford. As much as I didn't want to take responsibility for anything involving balefire, it was my turn to contribute. If I wired them up with an initiator, they'd make for an extremely compact and powerful demolition charge. I said. As Starlight's grin widened, I also added a word of caution. Also, an extremely volatile one. I wouldn't want to take one into a combat situation. Take a blow to the bags while carrying one of these, and we all die. Starlight looked back to the eggs, and the hooves that she'd placed on the edge of the case slid back an inch. They're that volatile? They're sturdy enough to not go off when fired from a balefire egg launcher, but volatile enough to detonate when they hit the ground. I'd guess their durability at around that of a glass bottle. I gave a wary look her way. Just a glass bottle that kills you and everyone in the general vicinity if it cracks. She looked warily down at the eggs as if they might decide a crack of their own volition at any moment. Are they safe as long as they're in the case? It doesn't look armored, so a bullet just might set them off. Other than that, the foam casing will probably protect them from impact, so as long as we don't do something stupid like toss the case off a high-rise. I reached out to tap the corner of the foam where a small gem was embedded. Though it looks like the case was enchanted too, so it might be more durable than that. Emphasis on might. After a moment of consideration, Dusty finally turned to me. Okay, appraisal. Would taking these with us be safe? Well, there's no such thing as 100% safe when you're dealing with primary explosives. I said, frowning down at the case and mentally shelving my own pondering as to whether Balefire eggs technically counted as an explosive or not. 
I suspected they'd be classified as incendiaries, though the difference seems academic in this case. If they're kept in the case and stored where they're unlikely to take us stray rounds, they should be just about as safe as we can make them. I also wouldn't take them out if there's any possibility of a fight, which limits how useful they are, but, well, as much as I hate to say it, given that I'd be the one stuck carrying the things, I can see the use of a low-profile but extremely powerful explosive device. Dusty frowned, mulling it over, while I took some minor comfort that I was not responsible for making such a decision. After a few moments, Dusty sighed. Fine. If we've got room in the cart, I'll take them. Starlight seemed much less enthusiastic about the decision than she had been just a minute earlier. The heavily laden cart creaked as Sickle hauled it up the slope, following the lights of our pit bucks and flashlights. Starlight was walking awkwardly on three legs. The new broadcaster slotted into her pit buck as she checked on it. Okay, looks like this thing is working just fine. They wired straight into the existing systems without tearing anything out like a bunch of animals, so the pit buck connector works just fine. We'll want to find something to seal up the case where they cut into it, though. Don't want to get dirt and moisture in there. Dusty said as he turned and sat with a sigh, looking back the way we had come. We were back at the same ridge that we had first observed the Raider Fortress from. At least we have one functioning broadcaster. That'll be useful. Starlight trotted up to sit beside him. It'll only be one way, though. Starlight pointed out. Pipbucks can pick up its broadcasts, but only the broadcaster can send them. One way is good enough. Dusty said, then quickly corrected. Well, it's not as good as two-way, but better than no way. Gives us a bit more tactical flexibility. Means that we can do stuff like post you up in a good overwatch location with your Lancer, but we can still talk to you to give targets or call you back. Great. Sickle rumbled as she shook off the card harness. Now you cunts can talk too much at long range too. Dusty smirked a little. Being able to split our forces like that also means that we can be more aggressive with our maneuver element too. You'll get into the action quicker. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Sickle said, her armor crashing loudly as she flopped down on her side. I sat beside them, looking in the same direction. Two pinpricks of light stood out in the darkness. I had turned on the lanterns in the watchtowers and they cast a feeble glow across the raider compound's walls. Dusty looked over to me. Well, Whisper, yes, you can do the honors. I nodded, remaining silent as I retrieved my remote detonator, turned it on, and disengaged the safety. Fire in the hall! I pressed the trigger, and in eerie silence, the compound erupted in a fireball. A ghostly flicker of a shockwave tore across the ground as the explosion illuminated the world around it, dividing everything into bright light and stark shadows. The only sound was a faint thrum, barely audible, that seems to come from all around. Beside me, Dusty grunted. That's gonna be loud, he said, his ears lying flat as he tucked his head down. I mimicked him just an instant before the shockwave hit us like a hoof to the chest. A deafening, sharp blast that receded into deep, rumbling echoes, punctuated by a few distant cracks and pops of secondary explosions. Within moments, the great rising fireball had burned out, plunging the world into darkness once more. The only light remaining to be seen out in the valley came from the wide-flung embers of burning building materials now scattered wildly around where the buildings had once been. The sounds of impacts faintly reached our ears as bits of debris fell to earth. I think some pieces landed behind us. Dusty slowly straightened again, blinking into the sudden darkness. In hindsight, we probably should have dug the graves further away. <laughs> What's this we shit? Sickle said, though she was chuckling. Shaking his head, Dusty started to undo the straps of his saddlebags. <sighs> Let's get settled in and get some rest before daylight. We still have plenty of traveling to do. The bonding that they're having together is actually really heartwarming in its own sick and twisted way. But I certainly hope for more. Anywho, let's get on to our not-twisted donators. Top donators are 630, J10Men, Only One Thing, Saru Orion, and Iron Sky. Darkside, Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moon, Heart, Pastel Skies, Austin Rollins, Stu Hex, Sword Brethren, Mordred, Omicron, Lyrae, Will, Chris, Twinkie, Ridesall, Badass Waffle, Shadow Moon, Luigi88, and many more fantastic people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.